and be specific with those bets. All right, let's bring in Sam Monson from Pro Football Focus, their lead NFL analyst, joining us here once again on HQ Spotlight. Sam, you're getting ready for the draft. You put on PFF a write up of a couple or a few surprises that you're predicting here. Let's start with the Broncos and how they might handle that quarterback situation. Yeah, I think everybody's sleeping on Denver in terms of how aggressive they might be in this draft. We're all focusing on Minnesota and the fact that they've already accumulated those two first round picks to go and trade up for their quarterback. But Denver, I feel, is desperate for a quarterback. Sean Payton staked his reputation on ending the Russell Wilson experiment, cleaning house, moving in a different direction. And right now he has no answer at that position. So I would not look beyond the possibility that Denver becomes a very aggressive team. Okay, they have less ammunition to work for, with than the Minnesota Vikings do, but they could parlay the future. They could mortgage next year. They could try and get up with additional draft picks and make that happen. So I feel like Denver isn't going to sit there with their first round pick and hope a quarterback slides to them. I think they might go and look for one. It's interesting you put top tier quarterback. I only ask that because there's a little bit of steam with Bo Nix. He might be the next Drew Brees naturally with Sean Payton. What do you think about what we're hearing during this time of year? Yeah, it's, it's certainly possible. Bo Nix has a skill set that syncs quite naturally with Sean Payton's offense in terms of accuracy, efficiency, able to make quick decisions, get the ball out of his hands quickly. But I think a lot of that is people sort of drawing two plus two and getting the answer that they want. It's not looking at this and saying, all right, in all things being equal, who would Sean Payton actually want to run that offense? And I doubt under those circumstances, his answer would be Bo Nix. As we've seen J.J. McCarthy's stock rise, we've seen Michael Penix drop somewhat here, and it's interesting in terms of where he originally was slated after the college football season and where we are inside of two weeks. So where are you at with Michael Penix Jr. right now? Yeah, his stock has been on a roller coaster ride. If you just take away the national championship game, we might be talking about Michael Penix Jr. as a top 10 draft pick. His stock was on the rise. He had just beaten Texas in that incredible playoff game. And we were talking about him as a first round pick and a guy that was going in the right direction. And then he runs up against that juggernaut of Michigan and everything goes off the rails. And he's a second round pick and a, and a guy that's in the second tier. But I think, you know, if you look at what he's been able to do, incredible seasons, PFF grades above 90. The stats uh, speak for themselves. Yards per attempt above nine as well. Incredible deep ball thrower. And it turns out he was an incredible athlete. When you watch a run of 40, he's in the four fours. So I think if you can get past that one game where it wasn't just Michael Penix, the entire Washington offense was overmatched. You can absolutely construct a case that Michael Penix Jr. does belong in the first round and in the first half of the first round. Again, we're going through predicted draft night surprises with Sam Monson here. Let's get to Spencer Rattler. How high could he go? Spencer Rattler is everybody's favorite mid-tier option at quarterback. Once those top guys are gone, Rattler's the guy that everybody is talking about. And another guy with some amazing college play on his resume. He has a season with a PFF grade above 90 way back at Oklahoma. And then he lost his job to Caleb Williams, and he ends up rebuilding his career at South Carolina. But, you know, technicians, throwing coaches, guys that look at throwing mechanics, they absolutely love the way that Spencer Rattler throws the ball. The fact that he's been through that adversity of losing his job, having to do it somewhere else, rebuild his career, I think is a big plus as well. And he can make all the throws. I think there's some ex exceptional tape on his college resume. The only question with Rattler is consistency. But once you're beyond those top guys, you're going to have that with everybody. So it wouldn't shock me if Spencer Rattler ends up going in the second round because so many teams see him as the best option once those top guys are off the board. And lastly, let's pivot away from quarterbacks to talk about the running backs. Sam, how would you characterize this class and how long are we having to wait to see the first running back off the board? I think it's generally seen as a weak running back class. I'm a little bit higher on it than other people, but the fact that so many other people see it as a weakness, I think is reinforced by the way the NFL was spending money in free agency on running backs. You know, it's a position that's been devalued in the NFL, but big contracts were getting handed out left, right, and center. And you can look at that as an indictment of this rookie running back class. The NFL did not, <clears throat> did not think that there was the cavalry of a draft class on the horizon 
riding to rescue, they have to go and spend money on veterans if they wanted an upgrade. So we might not see a running back get drafted. Forget round one. We might not see one get drafted until round three. By the way, just to wrap things up here, because we saw Jonathan Brooks and Blake Corum each dealing with injuries. Would their draft stock change, in your opinion, if they were fully healthy without those maybe question marks coming into the draft? Brooks, absolutely. I think Brooks would have a shot of being a top draft pick if he wasn't coming off that knee injury. I think it's the right thing to do from his perspective to come in now, get the clock uh, ticking on that second contract where the money is. Um, but absolutely, the NFL is going to you know, drop him a little bit down the board because of that injury. All right. Sam Monson joining us here on HQ Spotlight. Check out his write-up on PFF. Sam, certainly appreciate it, my man. Have a great weekend.